Hi, and welcome to Section 5, Different Folks, Different Libraries. During Section 4, we integrated a third-party database wrapper into our server and we built database calls to sort and filter our book collection. In Section 5, we're going to start thinking about a multiple user system, including individual book collections and authentication. We'll start this section by creating the UI elements necessary for a user to authenticate with our application. Next, we'll utilize a modern cryptography library to securely create and store users in our database. We'll verify the user's identity by writing a custom middleware to check a session variable. Finally, we'll update the database to allow each user to maintain an independent library. In this video, we'll design and build a new page for our application to manage authentication of existing users and registration of new users. We'll start by building a template for registration and login. Next, we'll work on the route handler to show the user the login page. Finally, we'll build a handler to forward users to the main page on a successful login. Let's get to it. So far, we've designed our application to exist entirely in a single web page. For login and registration, we'll want to create a new web page separate from the main content. Let's create a new file called login.ace within our templates directory. We'll start by adding a little bit of boilerplate here to include the HTML5 doc type as well as basic HTML, head, and body nodes. Inside the body, let's create a form element with ID login form. This form will contain a new row for the username field, the password field, and login buttons. We'll create these rows with div tags. Inside the first div tag, let's create a label with text username. After the username label, we'll create an input element of type email and a name username. The email type input will do client-side validation that the user has entered a valid email address. We'll set the required property on this field to verify that it has value. Inside the second div tag, we'll start with a label with text password. Next to that, we'll create an input of type password and name password. The password type input will hide the user's typing to keep the password a secret. The field should also have the required property set. Within the third div, we'll create two inputs of type submit. The first should have value and name register, and the second will have a value and name of login. Whenever the user submits this form, our validation will run and show any immediate errors. This is called client-side validation. Using client-side validation allows users to see any potential errors as soon as possible without bouncing an HTTP request off the server. Of course, any client-side validation we do can be circumvented by malicious users or older browsers which don't support HTML5 validation. Any data which is required or has a required format should be double-checked on the server. While we're thinking about it, let's style this form a little bit. We'll create a CSS area in the head element. For every div within the login form, we'll center align the text. For every input within the login form, we'll add a margin of 0.5 m units on the top and bottom, and 1 m unit on the left and right. When the user enters an invalid username or password, we should also have the ability to display an error. Below the form, we'll add a div tag with ID error. Using this shorthand, Ace will automatically assume we want to use a div tag here. Within this node, we'll display the content of an error property on the page object passed to us. We should add a little bit of style to this error message as well. We'll center align the text, make the font color red, and set the top margin to 1 m unit. Okay, next we need to build the route handler to display this page. Let's set a new handle func for the route named login. The first thing we need to do in this route is load the login template we just created using the ACE rendering engine. If the template isn't found, we'll send an internal server error in the response. Next, we'll execute the template. For the short term, use nil as the page object. If the template can't be executed, let's return an internal server error here as well. Finally, we need to send users to the correct page once a successful login has occurred. We don't have an authentication system in place at this point, so for now we'll just let everyone through after they hit register or login. At the top of our login handler, let's add a new check to see if either the register or login form values were sent. In the future, we'll use these values to determine whether to create a new user or attempt to authenticate an existing user, but for now we'll use their existence to redirect our users to the main page. 
Use HTTP dot redirect with the response writer W, the request R, the root URL slash, and the code HTTP dot status found, which is a 302 redirect code. Don't forget to return in this conditional so we don't do any unnecessary template loading. Congratulations, we've built a very basic login UI. Let's restart a web application and open up a web browser to localhost 8080 slash login to see our work. You'll see that our form will not submit unless both values are non-empty and the username looks like an email address. When we send valid data, we are redirected to the main page. In this video, we created a new template for authenticating and registering users.